Before we get into this banger video, you guys, I have to show you something huge that just came out that will blow your freaking mind. It is my favorite thing ever. It is the Nama C2 cold press juicer and blender in one. You guys, this is freaking amazing. I had to share it with you guys. You know, I love my uh, Nama J2 juicer. It is freaking the best. So you get that with this, you get a juicer like the J2 and you get a blender, which is, which is really comparable to the top blenders in the world. So this is amazing. You only have one base on your counter. You can do sauces, dips. I make my salad dressings in this, my zucchini noodle dishes in this, nut butters, sorbet, ice cream, everything you can do this machine. And this product, it is great. It comes with a juicing 101 for beginners course, a blending 101 for beginners course with nutritionist led videos and meal plans made by a chef for five day and 14 day. The packaging is biodegradable, compostable, everything it comes in, recyclable. If you wanna grab one, you can use my code. I'll put it down below and I hope you guys enjoy this video. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have an amazing guest. Her name is Karen Coleman and I stumbled upon her YouTube channel. Last week, I watched a video about everything she learned or the lessons she learned incorporating more raw foods into her lifestyle. And this video was so great. She was so just mesmerizing and incredible. And she has so many great videos on her channel about eating raw on a budget and all sorts of other things. So I thought I'd bring her on for her experience and her expertise, her knowledge, and let's get to know her. So hey, Karen, how's it going? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. It's good to be here. Like I said, I love what you do. I think it's awesome just having the different conversations about plant-based foods and healthy living. I think it's great. Yeah. Awesome. And yeah, so you're plant-based. So you went, I'd love to know when you went plant-based and what originally started that journey for you, like giving up animal products and dairy. So it's interesting. Like a lot of people think that, you know, people that go into like the plant-based lifestyle start because they had like a lot of health issues and things like that, but that's actually not what started me on the journey. What started me was actually like my hair. So I went natural with my hair. And at that time, like the natural movement was really like about like, focusing on the ingredients. So it was like, you know, no parabens, no sulfates, no this, no that. And I started with that, but then it kind of just morphed into, I'm like, okay, if I'm avoiding certain ingredients in like my hair products, what about like the foods? And like, I grew up, you know, eating everything, like, <laughs> like for a treat after school, like my dad would take me and my brother to go and get like, fries from McDonald's and a chocolate like that was you know what I mean like that's how I kind of grew up and thankfully I didn't have any health issues from that but that was just like I never really thought about the connection of like well you know them putting food things in foods and then that causing other issues like that just never kind of correlated to me so when I switched to my hair it just made sense I was like well yeah so I started like reading all of these things I started like reading labels and just like that's what kind of morphed into like well let me kind of change the way that I eat and change the foods that I eat because it was just like mind-blowing to me that there were actually things in the foods that could be harmful I guess I was kind of like ignorant in that sense thinking like well why would anybody put anything in our foods that's harmful like it was just mind-blowing to me and I started doing that and I started I think dairy and like pork and beef were like one of the first things that I cut out. And then I was like having like poultry and fish, but it was always like, you know, organic free range poultry and, you know, uh, what do they used to call it? Grass fed Not stuff? Farms, like With the fish. Oh, far. I don't know. Farm? I, I don't even know. Wild caught. I think that was what yeah, they yeah, said. Yeah, wild was. caught. They, yeah. yeah, they said that wild, wild caught was better. Um, so I was doing that. And then after a while, I, I wasn't doing that every single day. I was like, kind of eating more plants. Like it just, it just kind of morphed into that. I was like, okay, let me just start eating more plants. And I started like drinking smoothies. Like I love smoothies. So even when I was having like chicken or fish, like I was drinking smoothies. And I noticed just from drinking the smoothies alone, I started to feel just better. Like I said, I didn't have any health issues, but it was like, I had so much more energy. Like I wasn't tired all the time. Like I just, I felt so good from drinking the smoothie. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to keep this up. And it just started like a smoothie a day, a smoothie a day. And then I would just have them, you know, all throughout the day. And originally it was like a challenge for me. I was like, well, I wonder because I'd heard about veganism, but I didn't know too much. And at the time I was watching, who's the main one that was really popular with her? Fully Raw Christina. Yeah. 
I was watching her and I was just like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. But I was like, I don't think I can ever like go like raw. And I was like, nah, that's too much. But I wanted <laughs> to just kind of try like being, you know, plant-based and see how that went. Because again, I wasn't even eating the meat every single day. And then from that, I was just like, I never looked back. Like, wow. Yeah, I just, I cut out the meat and I just started focusing more on plants. During the heart of the pandemic, I bought a juicer and that was like a game changer for me. Like I became obsessed with like making my own juices because before it was just kind of, you know, mostly like smoothies and salads and things. But then once I bought my juicer, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like amazing. I started noticing just so much more things. And that's how it started from there. Is it the Nama? Did you get the Nama or no? You know what? No. So <laughs> that is on my list though. That is on my list to get. I do want to get that. Um, I don't have the Nama yet, but I do want to say this too, because what I get, especially like on my channel from a lot of different people, they think yeah. you have to have like all of this stuff, you know, in order to start. True. Like even the Vitamix, like I, I don't have a Vitamix. I think like when I first started making smoothies, I bought this. It's funny. I um, so I lived in New York at the time. And we had like these 99 cent and up stores. And I bought like some blender for like 10 bucks. Yeah. From one of those. Nine no. nine I was like making smoothies with that. So, you know, you can really just kind of start with anything. Like I what I like always like to encourage people is that whatever you have, whatever you have access to, just start because the most important thing is just you starting you getting those good fruits and vegetables in you however you can and then as you become more dedicated to the lifestyle then you can upgrade and get yeah different you know I agree like a hundred percent when I first well when I very first started getting way more health conscious and going raw I wasn't even like I don't even know if I had a blender then I can't remember if I did it was probably one of those little magic bullet ones like that you just turn on yes and, and I just and I transitioned to that one too yeah and I think I got a juicer at a garage sale and I was just mostly just eating the food like you're right you don't have to have all that it evolves over time if you can have all that amazing but it's definitely not necessary to like live a healthy life and did you notice big it, it's crazy I wanted to say too I know you said like you never had any health problems you know when you're eating the McDonald's eating this and I think a lot of people think that like people will all post people who are in their 70s, 80s, 90s and like they're raw and they're like living their best life. But people will be like, look at this person. They're smoking and they're still yeah. like 70. But are they thriving? Are they feeling right. their best? Is their mental right. health their best? Is their energy their best? Like right. I have so much energy all the time. Like I just went to Chicago on a trip and I, I'm so energized morning to night and people were around me who were like yawning and passing out and they were like, I don't know how she does it. Right. And yeah, they're living, they don't have health problems, but they're not thriving. Right. So do you really feel like it was, a sh even though you didn't have health problems, does it feel like it was a shift in your life? Like changing how you eat with like your energy, your mental health, all these other things. Absolutely. And I want to say, so there's a caveat to that. When I started on like my vegan journey, I didn't have any plant. I mean, I didn't have any like health challenges, but later on, like right before the pandemic, I found out that I was diagnosed with fibroids. And I think a lot of that had to do, and I, I think it's important to say this because a lot of people think like, you know, oh, I went vegan. So, you know, I shouldn't have any health problems, but there's different levels of vegan, right? Mm -hmm. So even on my journey, it was a total learning experience. But even on my journey, when I was like vegan, I was still like eating like the Beyond the Meats, the Impossible Burger, like, you know, soy ice cream, like all these different things that were highly processed and not understanding and making the connection like, oh, okay, even though this is vegan or it's organic, that doesn't mean that it's healthy for me, right? So I think it's important to, to really put that out there, that there's different levels to it. So for me, you know, I had fibroids and I was technically vegan, but I wasn't healthy. Mm -hmm. um, so once I did switch over, and this is like, I was diagnosed with fibroids, like before I got the juicer and all that stuff. But once I did, once I actually started juicing and started eating more like raw fruits and vegetables, and I was like making salads and doing all of that, I did notice a difference, not just like in my energy levels, but beforehand, I had a lot of like heavy bleeding, heavy cramping. Um, my mood swings would just be horrible horrible like 
especially down around the time of my menstruation, like I yeah. had horrible mood swings, like, and again, cramping, like the heavy bloating, like my pads would be soaked up within an hour. Like it was really, really bad. Yeah. Wow. It was really bad. Yeah. Um, and again, I thought that I was doing, you know, the right thing, you know, I would have my smoothies, but then, you know, I would have like a beyond the meat burger <laughs> for yeah. lunch or, you know, <laughs> And like, what's even in those? I've actually never had one of those. I don't know what's in those, but I am telling you, I would not feel good if I was eating those for lunch. Like I can just, <laughs> I just know that for a fact. Yeah. But it was just like, you know, this is what happens when you just, you just don't know because, you know, at the time I was just so trusting that, you know, well, why would they put anything bad in the foods? Why would, you know, I just, I, I, I honestly didn't know. And now looking back, I'm just like, there's just, there's no way. There's, and that's how everyone no eats, right? Like that's how the world is, right? It's not, it's not the norm to like eat super clean all day long, every no. day for days on days on days on days. No. And I don't, and I said that in my video, I don't like to label myself. I like to call yes. myself, you know, I, I prefer the word plant-based, but I'll say vegan because people kind of more so understand what that means. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because whenever I, you know, mention like, oh, hey, I'm a vegan or I don't, you know, eat meat or what have you. People will always, especially in Atlanta, people will always be like, oh, well, have you tried, you know, slutty vegan? And I'm like, no. Because <laughs> it's like, like, that's what she uses and no, you know, no disrespect to her, but that's what she uses. She uses like Beyond the Meat, Impossible Burgers, like that's, you know, but that's people's correlation to like healthy. They say, they assume that, you know, well, this is labeled vegan. So it must mean it's healthy, but that's not true. <laughs> yeah. And how do you feel like your healthiest? How do you feel your best? Do you notice a difference if it's like more raw versus more cooked or like? Absolutely. And again, for me, it's just been like a progression. Um, even once I stopped cutting out like processed foods and, you know, things of that nature. And I was, you know, still eating cooked foods, but it wasn't processed. So, you know, I would have like my, my mushrooms and, you know, some quinoa or things like that. When I started eating more so raw, yes. Like one of the biggest things for me was just like, I didn't realize how dehydrated I was. That's the thing. Yeah. That's, that's one of the hugest things. Like it was just a game. And I was just like, wow, like, and it was just, and it wasn't just like from juicing and making smoothies. It was also just like eating the raw fruits. And what was amazing, I was just like, oh my God, like I just felt so much more hydrated. And it wasn't like I was, cause I always like, you know, drank a lot of water and, you know, I primarily drink water if I'm not drinking like a smoothie or a juice or something like that. But once I started eating more raw fruits and vegetables, I just felt so much more hydrated. And then when I would go and eat like a cooked meal, I noticed I was like less dehydrated. And I was like, wow, like this is just, again, it was like mind blowing for me, like how much hydrated and much more energy that I felt when I was eating like raw fruits and raw vegetables versus not. No, it's like night and day. That's one of the biggest things. So the last time I had cooked food, I noticed that I was like, I need so much water. I don't usually, I was like, get me water, like liter after liter. And I'm like, I just want to feel how I feel raw. Like, cause the, like, even if you don't drink juices, just eating the raw foods, like eating apples, watermelon, like eating those foods, they, they have the water, right? So you just they naturally, do. your cells just get hydrated. You feel it in your brain, your whole body. And then yeah. once you have those foods, like I'll get a headache. Cause I'm not, cause it's like, Whoa, I need like so much water. That's yeah. a big thing. Did you notice any other like differences and like how, how do you feel best like eating in a day? So what I noticed when I started doing that is that like my body will crave those foods. So it's like your taste buds will start to change because your body is like, okay, we like this, like give us more, give us more, give us more. And for me, it wasn't even like, like a challenge, like, okay, I'm going to do this for X amount of days and we'll see how that goes. It was just I started just listening to my body and I was like, okay, my body really likes this. For mm -hmm. example, even last night, I just wanted fruit, you know, like normally I'll have like a salad or something like that, but I just, I wanted fruit. Um, mangoes are like one of my favorites now. It used to be like strawberries, 
but mangoes, I absolutely love mangoes. So I just sat there and just feasted on mangoes and I was full and I was satisfied. And I think that was another mind shift too. Like people think that you have to have some sort of cooked meal or, you know, protein. I'm sure you've heard the big protein debate. You have to have protein and then something to go with the protein, but I felt, I know it's funny. I just got to interrupt for one second. The whole protein (laughs) thing. It is funny because I have an amazing cameraman. (laughs) Nobody knows him. So I don't think he'll be mad. I'm saying this, but we were in LA and he works out all the time and he, I love him so much. So if he is seeing this, like no diss and he eats a lot of like regular protein, right? Like the chicken, (laughs) all the stuff, right? He is, we joke around and tell everybody who we film with that he's raw vegan just to laugh, but he's not, but he eats everything and he works out and he's so fit. And we did an interview with Luke Corona. He's 72, 50 years raw vegan. And Luke could do a seven minute plank. And then the other guy, I'm not going to say who he is, couldn't even get up, (laughs) do it. And he's like so fit. So like, it's crazy. Like, I don't know. It just like, it makes you think, right? It makes you think when I see somebody like Lou, 51 years raw vegan. And I see like, even being in a room with him, he has more energy than like (laughs) me, I think. And I have so much more than like a 20 year old. And I know other people that are in that age bracket that eat the standard American diet. And it's such a huge difference. And now that I'm like 41, I'm thinking, okay, like I'm thinking about like my 50s, 60s, 70s and the the, the rest of my life. Right. So it's like, how do I want to live? Like, I want to freaking live my best life. I don't want to just be like, okay, when's retirement? When (laughs) is like the, you know, and like depressing, no thanks. Right. (laughs) Anyway, sorry, I had to interrupt that, but yeah, okay. No, so no, you're fine, but it's true. Like, it's it's really true. And I'm just like, like every time somebody asks me that that question, like, well, how do you get your protein? It's just like, and I'm not, I'm not one of those people that like, I count calories, I count this, I count that. Like, I literally don't do any of that. I just me listen too. to my body. Yeah, you know? and that's I what think it's all about. I have a hard time grasping that, but I'm like, no, I literally just listen to my body and that's it. <laughs> And that's what it's all about. I know a lot of people ask me like exactly how much should I eat in a day? What should I eat? Like, how do I know when I'm full? You got to just listen to your body. I don't count calories either. Any of that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, and I think when I was kind of listening to other people, because, you know, I've always been pretty much like a slim person. And when I was listening, because there's some people that say, you know, don't have too much fat. So, you know, don't eat avocados, don't eat a lot Mm -hmm. of, you know, nuts or nut butter or whatever. Um, I love avocados. I do. And I don't really think about, okay, well, I've had my one avocado for the day and you know, that's enough. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had two <laughs> last night. I started and I started thinking before I had the second one, hmm, should I have a second one? And I'm like, screw it. I want a second one. It's ridiculous. Right, we need right. to not take it so serious. Just eat real food and don't take it so serious. Stop when you're full, eat when you're hungry and only eat real food. Even if you don't want to be raw. Just eat real food, like yeah. real steamed broccoli, like the processed food, like the beyond this, that no offense to that. Cause I don't even know what's in it. So, but like the box, it's, not good all stuff. This, it's like, it's not think good how it stuff affects our it. mental health and all this too, you know, it's like, it no absolutely good. does. And it just, it clouds you. And it's like, it's so amazing how once you clear all that stuff out and I'm very much like a person, it's not just like toxins in one area, it's it's toxins in the other. So I do, you know, cleanses and I do fast periodically as well, but it's just, it's amazing how much it, it clears your mind and you're able to see better. You're able to focus better. You know, for me, my spirituality is important to me. I'm able to hear from God better. Like, when you clear all that stuff out, when you clear out the junk, you can just, it just opens you up so much. And I'm just like, well, why wouldn't I want to embrace that? You know, why wouldn't I want? (laughs) Why wouldn't you want to feel more like yourself, more spiritual, more close to God and more happy and at peace? Right? Yeah. I just like, like, so that's what it is for me. Like I said, it's not even about like, you know, counting calories or counting this or, you know, seeing how much I eat. Like I just, I wake up in the morning, I listen to what my body is saying that it wants, you know, whether that be a juice or smoothie or just, you know, some straight up fruit. Like I said, I haven't in the past, like, I guess 24 hours now, I just like, I have like, you know, my juice, but I just, I've been eating grapes and I've been mean, eating mangoes for the past like 24 hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and that's I amazing. feel great. Like, yeah. And I know you mentioned some cleanses. So what types of cleanses have you done? And do you have any that you've enjoyed more than others or like noticed any benefits from them or anything? 
Yeah. So it's interesting because like, I haven't done like the challenges or anything like that. I, I thought about it, but again, I just kind of like go back to listen to my body. So there'll be some times where I will fast for three days. Um, for example, like if my church or something is having a fast for me, I like to incorporate both because I like to just give myself the mental clarity, not only the physical clarity, but just clarity in all areas. So I'll, you know, fast from social media. I'll just, you know, have juices. I'll just have like fruits or I'll just spend that time in prayer. I'll spend that time with God. Like I literally just clear everything out because I think we have so many toxins around us, you know, from social media, from just the environment. So I think it's important for anyone to just go on a fast, even if it's for like three days, you'll be amazed at what those three days will do when you just completely detox away from everything and just kind of give your chance, your body a chance to reset. Even if you are someone that, you know, is mostly like raw and mostly eats plants, we just get so many toxins from our environment and from, you know, society and things around us that we we do need occasionally to just kind of like detox and just kind of like, you know, decompress from all of that stuff. So for me, you know, I'll go on, like I said, fast. So I'll fast for like three days and I'll just have like um, juices or I'll just have like smoothies. And like I said, I just re- literally unplug from the world and just be so centered and focused. And I feel so much better to the point where this is just something that I'm going to do on a regular basis, like as I feel needed and just kind of like let my body guide me into where it wants to go with that. So if I last longer than three days, if I go through a week, then that's just what it is. And again, I'm just listening to my body and saying, okay, this is what it wants now. So for me, I've I've never like specifically tracked it. I've gone on fast for like three days or like a week, Mm -hmm. but honestly, and even like the most recent one, I can't even remember like how long it's been because I just haven't been like even focused on it. Like again, I've just been like kind of focusing on what my body wants. Like I'm trying to remember the last time that I had like some cooked food. I can't even. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. (laughs) That's so good. Yeah. And it's just a difference if you had it, right? Hmm? You'd probably notice a little bit of a difference then if you had like a full cooked meal for dinner. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like it's been times where it's been weeks where it's like my stove doesn't even get used. Like it's just, and I, I thought about that recently. I was like, you know, my, and I still have like pots and pans and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, these are just like sitting there. I haven't even really. (laughs) And you're busy, like you're a busy woman, right? So like, how do you have any tips for people? A lot of people come on my channel and they're like, I'm too busy. You must be in the kitchen all day long, which I'm not. Cause like, look, I produce a lot of content and do a lot. I look right. after my kids. Like, so do you have any advice for people who like want to take on more health habits, whether it's all raw, more raw, more plant-based and like, but they think it's just like so time consuming or expensive. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I have a lot of that, um, on my channel, like for people that follow me and I like to be practical, like I'm like the practical plant-based. And again, that's why I, I really like to focus on what works for me, not what what someone else is doing. So, you know, I live in the US, I work (laughs) outside of YouTube. So, you know, I had to do things that make sense for me. And, you know, although we were talking about like avoiding like processed foods, I think there's also a caveat to that too. So for example, if there's a juice shop that's near, that's near you and they have like a package of juices buy the juices. I don't see anything wrong with buying the juices. Obviously you want to read the labels, make sure, you know, there's nothing in there, but Mm -hmm. if you're watching these people make those juices and you saying that you don't have time to sit there in the kitchen all day, buy the juice that's already been made for you. Like, I don't see an issue with that. I think some people are kind of like, kind of strict with that. Like I have to make everything from scratch. And when you go into that mindset with it, it it can be overwhelming because you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I have work, I have kids, I have this, like, how am I going to just sit in the kitchen all day? Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And even just something as simple as eating fruit, that's Mm -hmm. not even something that you have to like prepare or prep in the kitchen. Like you can just literally, like I said, I'll get like a bunch of mangoes. Like my local farmer's market has like a box of 20 mangoes that I get. And I absolutely love those or grapes. Like you can just have those and just have like a bunch of those and that'll be enough, you know? Mm -hmm. So my tips is just like making things that make sense, even with like smoothies. Like I love to have like smoothies sometimes in the morning or even, you know, for snacks or throughout the day, I'll make like little, I'll put like some 
fruits and different things like in like one of those kind of like silicone bags so that when I'm ready to have them, I just dump the contents in my blender, you know, add water or coconut water or whatever liquid that I want. And that's it. So it's not even something that's like taking like a whole lot of time, right? Um, even with juicing, like I love to juice. One thing that I do sometimes as well is I'll save like my juices, like I'll freeze them. Mm -hmm. So you can like, say, for example, if I'm making like a green juice, I'll mm -hmm. pour like some of the green juice and some ice cubes, put that in the freezer. You can add that to your water. And as it melts, you're getting that juice, you mm -hmm. know, like you have to think of like practical tips that, you know, can get you through those moments where you're busy or you don't have time. You do have time. You just kind of have to like shift your mindset a little bit and think like, okay, how can I make these convenient for me without spending all this time in the kitchen, which I don't either. Like I said, I don't have time to spend in the kitchen, but like little yeah. things like that, like really help me and save time. Like prepping, if I'm like doing salads, like prepping my vegetables and it's like go shopping so that all I have to do when I'm ready to eat them is just kind of put them together. So some of those, those are some of the things that like I do to kind of like help me and save time. Yeah, those are great tips. And what would you say are there a couple of like your favorite meals, like a couple staples that you just love that are go-tos, whether they're all raw, high raw, or plant-based? Wow. So I love juice. <laughs> Me too. I love juicing too. I juice. What have I been doing lately? I juice all day. Like lately, I just drink like big juices all through the day and then have like a big meal. That's how I feel my best lately. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, those are like easy. Those are go-tos. Like I love smoothies. Those are like those are always so quick and easy to make, just throwing some different things in the blender. Like I said, I keep like little freezer bags of different fruits um, and some vegetables in there just so I can just dump them in there and kind of blend them up. I love salads. I love, I love nori wraps. Like I absolutely love, 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 love nori wraps. So I love to make like my own little sushi rolls. I'll use like some cauliflower, like yeah. cauliflower rice instead of like the actual rice put different veggies in there, have like some coconut aminos because uh, I don't do soy sauce just because as a woman that had had fibroids and stuff that I don't recommend soy. I don't think Me that's- Me too. Good. I used to have problems with soy. Yeah. 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 And that's the other thing too. Like I had to learn what my body agreed with and what it didn't. And I know for sure soy is definitely one of those things that it just, it does not agree with chickpeas for me is another one that's just even like you know some raw vegans will like kind of sprout the chia the, the chia the, the chickpeas. chickpeas yeah yeah I can't do that either it gives me like hormonal imbalance wow and, interesting yeah huh. yeah with the chickpeas it, how come absolutely. wow that's so interesting and I had and I know it was a chickpeas because I had cut chickpeas out for I want to say like a few years so I had gone an extended period of time without having any sort of chickpeas and, you know, like I said, I got my body to the point where, you know, I, my hormones were imbalanced. I no longer had heavy bleeding, cramping, or any of those menstrual problems. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, let me try to like reintroduce chickpeas and see, you know, how like my body would respond to that. And I might have been a little bit overboard with that, but I, like, I put it on like my salads. I was like just eating a lot of it. Um, and even like having like chickpea omelets and stuff. Wow. When I tell you my cycle, like the following month was horrible. Like, Crazy. Wow. Horrible. Interesting. That's so yeah. interesting. And I I knew that's what it was because again, there was nothing else that I was eating that was causing those problems before I had reintroduced the chickpeas. So I knew that's what it was. And then once I cut that out again, those problems went away. Yeah. So yeah, you really have to like be mindful and pay attention to your body. Cause even though, you know, a lot of people, especially in the, the, the plant-based community, they're like, you know, chickpeas, chickpeas, chickpeas. But just because other people are saying something is healthy, doesn't mean that it's healthy for you or that your body really agrees with that. So that's why I always go back to, okay, I got to listen to my body because my body is telling me that it doesn't want this. So I'm not going to feed my body something that it doesn't want. Mm -hmm. And speaking of yeah. things the body doesn't want, I know my body personally doesn't want coffee or alcohol anymore. I used to be someone oh, who drank wow. it all the time. Do you drink those things ever? Or was, was there anything like you never do either? Good. Was that no, ever a problem was... for you, those habits or no? No, the thing is like, I never, 
I never was like a real coffee person. The only time I would have coffee is like if I was like, you know, working a lot and I needed like some sort of like energy boost. But then Mm -hmm. even with that, like I felt horrible like afterwards, like you would just have like this crash. Coffee is very, very dehydrating as well. As I'm sure you know, it's very dehydrating. So like I didn't feel good. Even like the small times that I would have coffee, I didn't feel good. The same thing with alcohol. Like, you know, I was before I was like kind of like a, I guess what you would call like a social drinker. Like I would have, you know, some alcohol because like I'm out with friends or if there's like a wedding or something like that. And again, it was like dehydrating. So I was just like, mm, I mean, not. Yeah. Let me not consume that. Yeah. yeah, no, life is better without it. It's toxic. I don't think it it's is. good in it any really amounts, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so how, and has this more... It was more like, like my, I guess my vices was more like, like the sugars, like even the so-called, you know, plant-based sugars. Like mm-hmm. I loved like dark chocolate and Trader Joe's had this like dark chocolate sunflower, like buttercup. It was like their healthy version of um, like a peanut butter cup, but it had like added sugars and stuff in it. So for me, it was like, it was that, like I had to we myself off of that because I noticed I was like drawing more so to that versus Mm -hmm. something like caffeine or alcohol like we all have our different vices and for me that's one of the things it was yeah chocolate's been something for me too and I I love Trader Joe's we I wish we had that here we don't have it in Toronto and Canada it's so good oh you don't yeah yeah yeah. I love Trader Joe's I don't I'm not able to go there as much um because it's not like close to where I am now yeah. But when I lived in New York, I, I I lived at Trader Joe's. They had so many things and it was, you know, it was just super inexpensive. They had like these jicama wraps. I don't know if you tried their jicama wraps. No, I've never had jicama wraps. Oh my gosh, they're so good. And they're wow. really good. Like it's this alternative, like you can make tacos with them. You can make like wraps with them. They're so good. Yeah. Wow, so amazing. Good. Like, like thinly sliced jicama. And it's, it's all that it is. It's just jicama that they kind of like thinly slice. Like I said, I make tacos with those. I make wraps with those. That's another tip too. Like for people that don't have a lot of time to do that, get yourself some of like those types of things, like those jicama wraps, the nori sheets. Mm-hmm. Like you don't have mm-hmm. to prep all of that stuff. You can just add in whatever fruits, whatever vegetables that you want to add to it and go from there. And it literally doesn't take you like a whole lot of time. Yeah. And it's not boring. I think a lot of people think I'm just be eating a salad all the time. This is so lame. This is so boring, but it's not like the more you eat it, the more you want those foods. Like I'll lay in bed and be like, I can't wait to have my smoothie in the morning or like, I know whatever, but I never felt that way about like my eggs in the morning. You know, I never laid in bed. I can't wait to have my scrambled eggs tomorrow. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just different. It hits different. So have it you, absolutely does. have you been lonely on this lifestyle? I know it's like, that can be a thing. So how have you managed that? And I don't know if you have a family. I don't know how old you are. You look really young. So people, always, are you okay with sharing your age? People always ask. So yeah, that's fine. We're the same age, actually. I'm oh, <laughs> I, swear to God, I was just going to guess that you're 22. I swear to God. I swear yes. to God. I swear. <laughs> You look so young. That's why I didn't want to assume because I didn't know. I didn't want to assume if you have a family and kids because I'm like, she looks so young. And sometimes I'll think I'll ask someone like, do you have family? Do you have kids? They'll be like, I'm 21. (laughs) And I'm like, you look so young. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing that I feel like one of the amazing benefits of it. Like, and I still feel like, even when I say it out loud, like I'm almost like shocked myself, even though obviously I know how old I am, but I'm like, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Whatever like 40 something is supposed to feel like, I don't feel that. You know what I mean? Me like too. I still feel like I'm like 20. So, like I still have the same energy, you know, like no, I me still too. feel that. Like my four-year-old, when- she was like, How old are you? Like, <laughs> yes, it was yesterday, the day before. I was like, How old do you think? She goes, 13. <laughs> I was like, 41. She goes, Oh, that's so much. But I'm like, you too. I feel like when I say 41. I swear to God, I feel younger than when I was 21. I feel way better. So are you glad? Are you glad you found this lifestyle? Do you think you'll continue on? Or do you ever see yourself like going back to like McDonald's days and stuff? (laughs) Oh, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Like I have not. It's funny you say that. I have not been to a McDonald's in like 20 years. Like I I don't I wouldn't even go in there for a napkin. Like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Me too. You know what? Me too. Bad vibes. Like me too. No way. Is because and it's like 
once you know what's in this stuff, again, for me, that was like a game changer. That was enough for me to like stay on this lifestyle because I'm like, I understand now what it's doing to my body. I already know like what's in this stuff. Why would I want to put those poisons into my body? Like I just, I, I, I feel crappy just even thinking about that. Like, why would you want to do that? So there's like, there's absolutely no way, like there's no way I'm turning back. And it's just, I'm just so grateful for this whole experience because it's just been such an eye opener for me. And, you know, I encourage people all the time because, you know, no one in my life is like plant-based. Like I'm the only one that's plant-based. Me too here. Yeah. Yeah. But I still feel like, you know, obviously I would, you know, encourage everybody to, you know, eat, even if you feel like you can't go, you know, raw vegan or just plant-based eat more fruits and vegetables. I feel like everybody's going to stand to have some sort of benefits from doing that. But the way that I feel like there's no way that I could ever go back to like eating, you know, crappy foods. And, you know, even like I said, even when I eat like certain cooked foods and I don't like using like absolute. So I won't, I don't mm -hmm. like saying phrases like, Oh, I will never do, you know, X, Y, and Z fill in the blank. But yeah, I know. I just, you know, that's good. Yeah. When I, I when use I use absolutes too people. much, <laughs> I use absolutes too much, but it's way better not to. But it is. I feel like sometimes when you say, like, oh, I won't ever do this X, Y, and Z, you kind of find yourself in you that. I, maybe because we're human too, and we don't like to be restricted. And <laughs> we even restricting ourselves, it makes us want to go and do that. Right. But I can say for absolute, I will never eat McDonald's again, ever, oh, yeah. you guys, <laughs> ever. It, after my first daughter was born 10 years ago, that was my first meal. I had a double quarter pounder meal wow. with like a big flurry, the Coca Cola. And then she was up for two days straight. She didn't sleep. She was screaming so much stress. And I was like, what is going on? Like I ate like crap. Right. And I never connected it. I don't know. But then with my second, I was so healthy. She never cried. I love them both so wow. much. I'm not like knocking my first, but yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's interesting, right? It, it does have such an effect. And even if I walk into a McDonald's, which I never do, but over the years I've been in them with other people who have been having them. Mm -hmm. I swear just the smell of all that grease. And I yeah. can literally just feel the inflammation, right? It's like so inflammatory. <laughs> you feel it when you start to eat this clean. And if you have Absolutely. something like were to have something like that, you'd literally feel in your cells. Like I would you feel do. like the inflammation. You do. And that you signals absolutely your body do. saying like, this is not meant for me. It I don't want this in here. Do. Like get you this the do. F out of here. Do you know? <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. And it's just like, like I said, I don't like how I feel. And, you know, again, I haven't been to like a fast food restaurant in a long time, but I don't, even when I eat certain things like, example, like Chipotle, um, they have like their salads or whatever, like mm -hmm. even eating that. And there's nothing like, you know, like I said, it's not like I'm eating, you know, their meat and whatever, but even small things like that, I'm like, yeah, I got to go back home and go back to like my own foods and my yeah. own. Because it just, I, I just feel so much better. So for me, that was enough. And I have people ask me, you know, all the time, like even people in my life, they'll see the way that I eat. And they're like, wow, like, I just I could never do what you do. Or I don't know how you stay focused. And my thought is, I don't know how you do what you do. Like me too. <laughs> I feel like terrible eating that stuff. Like I just I couldn't go back to that. And, you know, again, it's just I feel so much better. I love like to see the shock on people's faces. Like when I tell them how old I am, because everybody thinks I'm like, you know, 20 something. And I'm like, no, like, I think, you know, granted there are women in my family that, you know, age really well, but I feel like with this lifestyle, I like accelerated the heck out of that. And just, you know, like, I want to be like, a, I want to be like, you know, 60, 70 years old and people thinking like, oh my gosh, are you 20? Like, yeah. you know, and I feel you like, like, like chef Babette, like a chef Babette. Oh like, my gosh. Yeah. Oh my like God. in when That's I saw her so in person fun. in LA, I was like, oh my God, when I walked in, she looked so freaking good. And she's 72, I think. Yeah. So, I mean, just seeing those results and it's not even just about like the outward appearance and looking great on the outside, like just how they feel, you know, like being able to just have so much energy and just like this zest for life. Like it's just, it's, it's unmatched. So for me, like, I just, I could not see myself. No, not ever. Yeah. I'll say not ever. Yeah. Instead of never. Not <laughs> no, it, ever. And it, it's like you said, it's all about how you feel. That's why I eat this way. It's nothing to do with looks. It's like all how I feel. But then it's like, I just interviewed Karen Calabrese in Chicago. And she was like, yeah, Jillian, you're right. She's like, but the outer kind of reflects, right? 
how you're treating the inner. So like, let's treat the inner good. You guys let's pick up yeah. fruits and veggies today, eat well, and it'll make you feel well. And do you stop? Supp- oh, okay. One more thing I want to say too, since we were talking about the fast food joints, mm-hmm. I saw this reel the other day and it was like a Popeye. It was talking about, I forget which fast food place, but I watched part of it and it said the Popeye's no offense, Popeye's, but the Popeye's chicken burgers, like one of them has like 22 man-made chemicals in it or something crazy. Ooh. And I was thinking like, that's crazy. Who knows what's in all the other places too, right? And who knows how that affects your brain and like long-term, if you're eating that for lunch, like regularly, regularly, I don't know, guys, there's just a yeah, lot of that's... problems in the world now, like Alzheimer's, this and that, who knows where it's coming from, but. No, I mean, I, a lot of people don't want like, to correlate that, but it's, it's definitely true. It is definitely, definitely true. Like all of that stuff is just, you know, even if it's like labeled vegan or organic mm-hmm. or what have you, yeah. like, it's so much crap that they put into that. And it's just like, even when you think about it, like even as far as like, like food at the grocery store, that's like in cans, for example, it has like, you know, the organic labels like slapped on it. They have to put something in that to make it sit on the shelf, right? Like that's if you were to thing. put like, for example, if you were to put like a piece of broccoli in a mason jar and set it out on your counter, after a while, that's going to go bad, right? Yeah. Like for months, like you just let that sit there for months. Would you then eat that? Like if it's been sitting in that mason jar for a month, would you then eat it? Yeah, no. No way. <laughs> no. But I mean, like if you really think about it, like- It's gross. Yeah. yeah. Some of the food, one. it's gross. It's like, this is packaged to last like six years, two years, three years. How it's like, what? Is that? Like crazy. Unless it's like a nut, like a natural nut that naturally right. lasts a long time. Crazy. Right. So you have to think like, okay, there's something that they're putting in that in order to make it last as long as it is. Like, it's just gross. Like when you think about it, it's just, it's so gross. And I just, yeah, I, I can't do that. And like I said, it was a process for me and it, I evolved to this point, but now I'm like, when I go grocery shopping, it's like on the outskirts. And it's so funny. Cause like when I'll go to the grocery store and I'll check out, like yeah. the people will see like all of the items that, you know, I'm checking out or whatever. And the person behind me or the person in front of me has like, you know, eggs and this and that and all this other stuff. And then they see like fruit, 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 vegetable, vegetables. <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> No, I get it. They're just looking. They're just staring. I get it all the time. And then the cashier is like, what's going on here? Or like, is this for school lunch? Or like, what is happening? I'm just like, oh. No, this is just, (laughs) this is what I'm eating, you know? And I feel so much better doing it. Like I said, my body just, it just naturally craves that stuff. Like I just don't crave like things that are processed or man-made. And I've learned like, what my body loves and what my body doesn't love. And I think that's important. Like you have to really know your body. You have to know what it agrees with and what it doesn't. And like I said, even with things that are, you know, considered healthy, if my body doesn't like it, then I'm just not, I'm not going to eat it regardless of what someone else says. I think, you know, yeah. And I think that's another thing I would say to people on this journey. I think it's amazing to, you know, watch interviews to listen to other people share their stories and share their experiences, but your experience is going to be different from someone else, you know? And, you know, a lot of people get into like different things, like, well, this food isn't good for you. And even this, you know, I get some comments that people are like, well, this isn't a health food, you know, or this isn't healthy because of this, this, and this research or because of what so-and-so said. And for me, I just go back to the way that I feel, right? Like, this grows from the ground, this grew from the ground. I don't really care how the history of it is. Like you took this seed and put this seed together and to make this vegetable or what have you. I don't get into all of that. Like I said, I shop on the outer skirts or shop yeah, at me too. Markets yeah. and I fuel my body with what I know that it needs. I fuel my body with what makes me feel good. And I go from there. I don't really focus on what other people are saying or what other people have said is healthy or you should stop doing That's this. Good. Yeah. You can go down the rabbit hole. And I've had friends that were like, send me articles, like, you know, I forgot what it was. Like it's something new every day and it'll be like a health food. Like, you know, well, apples aren't good for you now because people are saying it could cause yeah. this, this and this. And I'm just like, yeah, but you know, that McDonald's that's you need, that's social media bag branch. of chips that you ate, that's what's that <laughs> going to do for you? Thing, right. What the heck? Right. So it's just like, I'd rather just, you know, eat the apple 
versus eating something else, which is just, it's just like, come on people. Like, you know, let's use our brains. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and when was it that you started in at adding in more raw? Like people might wonder when, what time frame? like, when was that? It was it within the last year, right? Or no? Yeah, it was, yeah. it was within the last year. And it was interesting because it was like, like I said, for me, I really feel like this is something that God wanted me to do because I remember like about a year or so ago, I had, it was so interesting. I came across like this public access channel or something. And it was this woman and her daughter, her grown adult daughter, and they were making like raw meals. And I was just sitting there watching that because I, I, I've i always loved to cook. So I like grew up watching the Food Network so I can watch people cook, even if it's, you know, not like yeah raw products. I just like watching cooking shows so I was like okay this is interesting like she's making like all these raw foods and it just it just became so intriguing to me and I was just like wow like and the foods that she was making were like really like they looked delicious and it just kind of started as a thought from there as far as like eating raw mm -hmm. um and then it started off as a challenge again like one of my churches was having like a fast and they were like saying, okay, we're not going to eat food until like 6 p.m. And then from 6 p.m., you're just going to eat raw fruits and vegetables. And I was thinking to myself, well, I can do that. And actually mm -hmm. I can go longer than that. Like, cause it was just like a three day fast. And I was yeah. like, I can go longer than that. And it started like that. Like I was just like, cause I was already, you know, eating mostly raw fruits and vegetables anyway. Like when I sat down and thought about it, you know, I would have like maybe one cooked meal a day. So I was like, this, the thought of like, not having that cooked meal wasn't that far off because I was like well yeah. you're basically kind of already doing this anyway like you already kind of believed in that so why not indulge in that more and that's when I said when I stopped eating cooked foods and started just eating more raw fruits and vegetables or exclusively raw fruits and vegetables that's when I noticed I was like wow I just have like so much more energy and I'm so hydrated I think for me the hydration part was like the biggest thing that was just like wow because I, I didn't feel horrible I should say but again I didn't notice how dehydrated I was until I just started only eating raw fruits and vegetables like I was just like going to the bathroom a lot more and I was just like I was like wow I'm really like and then when I yeah. I can't remember how long that was but when I stopped you know and I started eating the cooked meal again that's when I was just like wow I'm like dehydrated now like this is so crazy but when I was like, just eating the raw fruits and vegetables I wasn't like dehydrated. I was like just super hydrated. And it's like my, it was just interesting because it's just like, you think that you're doing the right thing because you're like, I'm eating healthy. Like these cooked foods are not inherently, you know, bad for me. They were good foods, but they were just cooked. And you just don't realize like how much the, they took the water out of it just by cooking the foods and how you keep all the water, you keep all the good nutrients by not cooking the food. Like it was just mind blowing for me. And like I said, for me, like, how I felt and how hydrated and how much more energy I felt. I was like, Oh, I like this. Like I, yeah. I think I want to keep doing this, you know? No, it's amazing. And it's working for you. It's meant to be. I feel like you're on the right path. I do. I do. And it just, it feels so good. Like I said, cause like, you know, seeing that was like kind of like a sign for me. And then when my church went on that fast where they were, you know, just kind of going raw and a lot of people were complaining like, Oh, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? And I'm like, <laughs> It's like, meanwhile, it's easier. You don't have to yeah. cook. Right. How am I going to do this? How am I going to stop cooking? Right. Like, and it's I easier, just, everybody. I thought about it. I was like, honestly, you can do this because it's not like you technically haven't been doing that. Like I said, I would go for periods of time where I just wasn't using my stove anyway. Like I just was just eating, you know, like salads and smoothies and juices. So I was like, well, yeah, you kind of already doing this now. So <laughs> and do you supplement at all? People might ask, do you supplement or no? No. And you know what? That is another thing that I did notice. Um, when I was eating more so cooked foods, I, I supplemented like yeah. a lot because I kind of had this thing in my mind. You know how they teach you is they're like, well, the nutrients aren't in the soil anymore. You have to like, you yeah. know, supplement for the lack of and what have you. I really noticed that I didn't need to supplement like that. Like I've been kind of going without the supplements for a while now since I've been doing this and I feel fine. Like, you know, I, I had my blood work done recently, you know, my annual physical and, and I wasn't, 
Good. lacking anything. Right. It's like, good to check so- in. I think it's important for people to check it, like check it once a year, you know, at least see how it is. I do that too. I supplement, but I, again, I see a lot of people who don't and like, they also, they're like, I'm fine without it. So again, I think that's another thing too. People have to do what's best for them. I'll link down Absolutely. below. If you guys wonder the supplements I take, they're all in one. They're great. But I think for me, it works, but you have to do what's right for you. Yeah. And I'm not, that's another thing. This is not an absolute. Um, I'm not saying not ever, mm-hmm. but I feel fine. Like if I feel the need to, then, you know, definitely I would. Um, but right now I just been, I've been feeling fine. So like I said, I just kind of want my body to get as much of the nutrients in their unaltered form as possible. So I'm going to, just going to keep kind of doing that. And again, seeing how my body feels from that point on and, you know, just go from there. Yeah. Well, this has been awesome. I could talk to you all day. I think you're just such an awesome person. You're so fun to talk to. I feel like we have a lot in common. <laughs> so this has been great. You're such good vibes. You're just glowing Thank you. and Thank we're you. honored you came on. So thanks so much. And if there's anything you want to end off with anything you feel like we missed about your journey or any inspiration for somebody who wants to be where you're sitting, wants to feel healthier, wants to be living their best life. And let everybody know where they can find you. And I'll link your channel, which is amazing. Everybody go follow. I'll link everything down below as well. Yeah, I would just encourage people to just start where you are. Definitely it's wonderful to take inspiration from other people's journeys. But I I highly encourage people to start where they are. Even if you know you don't have all of this equipment and you don't have access to all of these things. That's another thing. I, I have people following me from all over the world. And I've had some people message me and say, oh, I wish I could eat the way that you do. I don't have access to the same fruits and vegetables that you have. And I'm like, it's not about that. Like eat whatever is local to you, right? So I live in the US. Obviously, if you lived in the tropics or in Africa or somewhere else, mm-hmm. the fruits and vegetables that are locally available to you are going to be different. But yeah, consume whatever you have that's available, like use whatever the tools that you have available to you and make the most of that. And you'll, I guarantee you, you're going to feel amazing afterwards by just making those small little steps. And then as you do that, pay more attention to your body and how it's feeling, whether that's, you know, a a good feeling or a negative feeling, pay more attention to how your body responds. Once you're incorporating these different foods, learning and finding out what you like, And another thing is your taste buds will start to change. So even if you say, well, I didn't like such and such fruit, there are a lot of fruits and vegetables that I didn't like. For example, I didn't like peas. I didn't like a lot of greens initially, and I love them now. You know, Mm -hmm. I love fruit, but I also love greens too. So that was something that just kind of evolved. So once you like open your mind up to being open to trying different things that are available to you and using whatever tools that you have. And as you progress in your journey, if you want to, you know, upgrade and get a juicer or get a different blender or a food processor, what have you absolutely do that. But there's no shame in starting exactly where you are. And just by eating, you know, different raw fruits or vegetables that are locally available to you to start by starting doing that, you're going to notice some amazing benefits to the point where you're probably not going to go back and you're going to want to embrace that even more. So just enjoy it. You know, that's my advice. Just enjoy it. Learn your body, learn yourself because it's an amazing tool. It can, there's so many things that you can do with your body and it's a body, your body's ability to heal itself is amazing. If you give it the things that it actually needs. That's the thing, the right things, you know, we don't give a car jello or pudding, we give it the gas, <laughs> which it runs on. So let's give our bodies the right thing so it can run properly. And I've enjoyed this. Yeah, you're Mm -hmm. awesome. Again, I'll link everything down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This has been so much fun. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if you don't already for more great videos just like this one. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.